Hello friends, this video on principles of inheritance part 45 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 3. Using a Punnett square, work out the distribution of phenotypic features in the first filial generation after a cross between a homozygous female and a heterozygous male for a single locus. So here it says that it, we have to cross a homozygous female. Let us suppose that is denoted by AA and the heterozygous male is denoted by a capital A small a. So we have to do a cross between these two. So capital A small a and small a small a. So what are the possible gametes that will be produced? Capital A small a and in this case it will be small a small a. So these are the possible gametes here. Right? Now, once we know the gametes, how do we prepare a Punnett square? We put the gametes on the topmost row and on the leftmost column. So, let us put the gametes here. So, let us suppose these are the gametes which have been placed on the topmost row and the leftmost column. Now, let us try to find out the combinations. So, these are the various combinations possible. So, from this, we can try to find out the phenotypic and genotypic ratio. So, basically, this table will give you the F1 generation. So, looking at this table, what do you see? What would be the phenotypic ratio? So, if you talk about the phenotypic ratio, this, this will have the same phenotypes, right? So, the phenotypic ratio is going to be 1 is to 1. They have the same phenotype. Similarly, these two have same phenotype. If you talk about the genotypic ratio, what is going to be the genotypic ratio? So, the ratio between AA and AA. So, that is also going to be 1 is to 1. So, in this case, the phenotypic ratio and the genotypic ratio is going to be the same for the F1 generation. Question number 4. When a cross is made between tall plant with yellow seeds, heterozygous and tall plant with green seed that is tall is heterozygous but green is homozygous. What proportions of phenotype in the offspring could be expected to be tall and green, dwarf and green? So let us try to perform this cross. So in this case we have capital T small t capital Y small y. This is crossed with this is crossed with capital T small t small y small y. So first we have to find out the all possible gametes. So all possible gametes here would be capital T capital Y capital T small y small t capital Y and small t small y. Because we unless and until it is mentioned in the question that the genes are linked, we will not consider any linkage. We will assume that they will assort independently. So here also we will try to find out all the gametes that will be capital T small y, capital T small y, small t small y and small t small y. Right? So these are the possible gametes in this case. So now once you have all the gametes, now basically if you see here it is just repetition of the same gametes. If you see there are only two unique types of gametes that are being introduced, capital T capital Y and small t small y. So let us write down the gametes on the topmost row and on the leftmost column. So let us suppose we write these four gametes on the topmost row. So this is how we write these four gametes and we write these two gametes on the leftmost column. Now please remember we do not write unnecessarily the repeated gametes because anything that is not going to help you. Okay. And by mistake I wrote it in the same way. So this is one and this is another one. So this is the Punnett square. Correct? Right. So let us try to uh, make the combinations. So this would be capital T capital Y, small t small y. This will be capital T small y, small t small y. This will be small t small t capital Y, small t small y, and this will be small t small y, small t small y. Again here it will be capital T capital Y, capital T small y. This will be capital T small y, capital T small y. This will be capital T small y, small t capital y, and this is T Y T Y. So these are the various combinations that we will get. Now we have to find out how many of them, what proportion of them would be tall and green. Now here you can see that tall is denoted by capital T, right? And yellow is denoted by capital Y. So capital T denotes tall, 
and capital Y denotes yellow and these are the dominant traits right so if we want something to be tall so it should have capital T so and if we want it to be green so green is the recessive trait so it should have two small y's for being tall it has to have at least one capital T and for being green it should have two small y's so how many do you think satisfy the criteria so here if you see this one has one capital T but it has one capital Y also so this will not satisfy the criteria if you look at this one this has one capital T and this has two small y so this this fits into the criteria again if you look at this this doesn't fit into the criteria because you don't have capital T so again you have capital T here but you do not have two small y but here you have one capital T two small y so this also fits into the criteria here or here you do not have two small y here again you have one capital T and two small y so basically three out of eight so tall and green is three out of eight right so three out of eight are going to be so three eighth are going to be tall and green so the next question asks dwarf and green so in order to be dwarf it has to be there has to be two small t together and for green it has to be two small y together so how many do you have where we have two small t's and two small y just one so this is the only one where you have two small t's and two small y so basically just one out of eight so this is the one eighth of the proportion would be dwarf and green and three eighth of the proportion would be tall and green. So this is how we actually find out that how the offsprings would be like on a particular cross. Question number five, two heterozygous parents are crossed. If the two loci are linked, what would be the distribution of phenotypic features in F1 generation for a dihybrid cross? So now you have the concept of linkage because the question specifically says that they are linked. So now two heterozygous parents are crossed. So this is how a heterozygous parent will look like because we are considering a dihybrid cross. So two traits need to be considered. So the two traits are A and B. Right? So when these heterozygous parents are crossed, so first of all, we have to find out all possible gametes. Now, since it is said that A and B are linked together, so A and B will get inherited together. Therefore, small a and small b being present on the homologous chromosome, they will also get inherited together. So therefore, the possible gametes are capital AB and small ab. Similarly, here in this case also, the possible gametes will be capital AB and small ab. So what are the possible combinations that are possible with this? So these are the possible combinations with this. So what can be formed? Capital AB, capital AB, or you can form capital AB, small AB, or you can have capital AB, small AB, or you can have small AB, small AB. So if you look at their phenotypes, so all these three have the parental phenotypes. So they have the parental phenotype, right? Because phenotype wise, capital A is dominant over small a. Similarly, capital B is dominant over small b. So in this case also A, B will get expressed. Here also A, B will get expressed. So these will be similar to the parental phenotypes. Whereas, if you talk about this one, and this is how exactly how the parents look like, right? So even the, in the parents also, they the dominant ones are getting expressed. But if you look at this one, this is the only one where only the recessive traits are getting expressed. So what do you see? Since the look, since they are linked, but it is not mentioned that they are completely linked. Because had they been completely linked, in that case, you would have received all the offspring as parental phenotypes. Here, most of them are parental phenotypes, but some of them are recombinations. So you can observe few recombinations. However, you see mostly parental phenotypes. So mostly parental phenotypes. So the ratio is around 3 is to 1. So parental phenotypes to recombinants ratio is 3 is to 1. Question number 6. A child has blood group O. If the father has blood group A and mother blood group is B, work out the genotypes of the parents and the possible genotypes of other offsprings. Now, in the question it says that the father has blood group A. 
Now, what are the various possible genotypes? If the phenotype has to be blood group A, the father's genotype can be IAIA or the father's genotype can also be IAI because IA is dominant over I. So, in that case also the blood group will be A. So, these are the two possibilities for father's blood group. So, if you consider the mother's blood group, mother's blood group is B. So, what are the various possibilities for mother's blood group? Mother's blood group can be IBIB IB or it can be IBI. I. So, these are the two possibilities again for the mother. Now, it has been given that the child has blood group O. So, if the child has blood group O, that means the genotype of the child has to be II. So, now if the genotype of the child has to be II, in that case it is very obvious that the parents have to be heterozygous, only then this I will come into picture, right? Because if the parents are homozygous, so there is no small I anywhere. So, how will this II be formed? So, therefore, the parents have to be heterozygous. So, let us look at the scenario when both the parents are heterozygous. So, in that case, the cross will be like this, IAI cross IBI. Correct? So, what all this can contribute, IA or I? This can contribute IA or I. So, now this can combine with this, this can also combine with this, this can combine with this or this can combine with this. So, the various possible options would be IAIB or IAI or IBI or II. So, there is a possibility, there is 25% chance that these are the possibility of the blood group of the offspring. So, there is 25% chance that the offspring can be of blood group O. There is a 25% possibility that the blood group can be B. There is a 25% possibility that the blood group can be A. And there is a 25% possibility that the blood group can be AB. So, II would mean blood group O. IBI would mean blood group B, IAI would mean blood group A and IAIB would mean blood group AB. Right? So, from this to answer this question, it says genotype of the parents. So, the genotype of the parents would be IAI and IBI. These are the genotypes of the parents and what are the possible genotypes of other offspring? So, these are the possible genotypes for the other offsprings. Now, if you want for your own um, understanding, if you want, you can try to cross between these homozygous parents and then you will be able to see that in that case, none of the offsprings will have blood group O. Thank you. Please visit www.examclear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.